your ego could be so sensitive, right? That you're a little baby. But this is why I think everything comes back to love, trying to feel love, trying to feel love within myself. And oh, I'm not trying to cry like a uh, um, And I was always kind of struggling with like, am I lovable? Mm. Sorry. Oh. <clears throat> so it's, it's, the, it's the greatest skill on planet Earth. If there was one skill, I would say the art of communication would be the greatest skill to make you money, but the greatest skill to have a rich life. The most I ever made was two million. Dude, I went to make it a hundred million. And I'm gonna tell you this. How did a guy 50 X his income? I'm gonna tell you how. What do you think matters the most? Changing people's lives. And I, you know what I learned? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna tell you something real quick. This is crazy. So if anybody wants to make money, this is the key. Hey guys, just landed in LA. We're gonna go smash a podcast with Bradley Martin. First, we're gonna go hit the gym, go grub out with my team. It's gonna be a kick-ass day. I love Bora, dude. I mean, I'm sure it would mean something whoa, completely whoa, different. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice. This is nice. Very nice. Andy, do you know what you do with a billion dollars? I'd give it to Jackie, because she knows what to do with her money. As long as I got a gym and good people, I'm good. Would you trust Andy with a billion dollars? Absolutely not. Actually, I would trust him, because he would trust me. He would give it to me. Did you hear his answer? Yeah. Give it to me. Well, actually, did he? Is that what you said? <laughs> I might have some extra chicken. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure Big Ryan can help me eat something. I didn't know this was a no. I wasn't sure how to order it, so I just said, I want as much protein as I can possibly get. And Ian, listen. That's badass. I'm proud of him. I'm good, man. Thank you. I was about to ask you if you wanted my wrap because I thought that's all you ordered, but that's perfect. I was going to say, I, uh, I ordered uh, 900 grams of chicken. That's literally, that, that, no, it's nothing. Why'd you do that? Because I always want to do something for you guys. I never get the chance, so come on. No, but it's nothing. You, you, you bring this guy who eats freaking enough for the whole restaurant, and then that guy, it's like, dude, do it on a day where... Huh? I'm yeah, crushing yeah, you too. No, you, no, you, you do. You do. I I Ali, why did you pay for the meal? When you have amazing people in your life that do a lot for you, the least you can do is return the favor and take good care of people you love and care about. Thank you. And you want to get your ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no matter what I do, I always say the weight doesn't matter, it's how you look. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. These old 32s and a half when you're 44 years old, you just move them slow. Now you look shredded, man. You know, that's the key. Just move it slow, man. You know? It's important to go to the gym every day. Well, sorry for those who don't. It's a whole game changer. Well, if you're going to compete against someone else and they're in shape and you're not, you take 10 people in shape and 10 people out of shape and they both have the same skill and they're both in the same business. The 10 people in shape will ultimately outlast the 10 people who aren't in shape, which that's common sense because it's health. But then the energy, the mood, you know, when you work out hard, you push yourself, how we're breathing hard, your body releases dopamine, endorphins, oxytocin, serotonin. These are chemicals your body releases when you push yourself and do difficult shit. People that are out of shape, they never get these chemicals. So they don't have that biological reward. We do. It feels good. And by the way, it's for me, but then everyone I talk to in the next 12 hours after this is also going to get those chemicals because I'm going to give it to them. It's called creating a state. And a lot of people, they just, they don't, they don't understand that. You know, a lot of people can make money for a year or two. Making money for decades, you're gonna need this shit. So if you wanna be a winner for your whole life, you gotta hit the gym. Guys, we're in the, we're in LA, we're in the Mecca of squeaky gym equipment. This thing is, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger used this back in the 70s. It works great. We got about four plates loaded up. We're gonna do sets. Sets for Bradley, how about? Bradley, 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 Bradley. Ah. 300, Bradley, where you at? Yeah, 260. 
meets 300. Anytime, any place. Any challenge, teeth whitening challenge, bodybuilding contest, fight out back and liability, whatever you want to do. Let's go. We don't go anywhere without the team. We are the team. No team, no winning. People don't win alone, they win with the team. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. We say it all the time. The reason why we're kicking everybody's ass is because we got the best team. Well, you're not technically kicking the ass. The team is kicking the ass. Well, that's we're just that's along the team. ride. We're kicking everybody's ass. You know, I tell everybody, I'm like, dude, if anybody separates, you know, you get to live off the memories of what it was like when you had the team yeah. for about a year, and then you're on your own again. Okay. Yeah, well, no, I mean, listen, it's like this. It's like, it's like look, when, when, when there's a great player in a company, and, they, and they're like the company builder, when, when that guy leaves the company, the company doesn't just fall apart. Yeah. The company has momentum from that guy being there for a while. But then when the absence of that person over a period of time, then everything crashes. And so like, that's why when somebody gets a divorce, you know, it's like, they're like, you know, I'm good, I'm gonna go around and see all these girls, I'm gonna do all this stuff and it's cool. And, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm alone. Like, I don't, like, like, you got through a little bit, but now you realize. You know, I love that, how you switched it from a team to a divorce. Yeah, no, that was, quick. I was like, no. You see people do it all the time. Well, like that was they, a good analogy, yeah, they leave, they leave okay, something yeah, important. Or and kissing then, his ass. No, no, no. I mean, you, you're, like, uh, you're like, I just want to go home and hang out. And you're like, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. you know, yeah. and 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 you realize that that wasn't really what you wanted, yeah, you know. Exactly. And so like, and so what happens is greed. We talked about it with politics, like yeah. in war. Ego, pride, greed, you know, people want to people want to conquer and divide. So I'm like, I'm like, we're together, or divide and conquer. So I'm like, we're together, I'm like, well, if I divide, there's more for me. And then so you're like, okay, I'm going to divide this thing, and I'm going to go conquer, and then what happens is you get beat. And, and honestly, you become a, a horrible person. Because... These people are horrible people. Well, you become evil because in order to conquer, you sometimes have to become evil. We're conquering with love and with like the right intentions. And like that's why it's taken, I mean, we're doing it faster than what a lot of people can do it, but that's why it still takes time and patience. Because when you're building something good, it takes time to build it, you know? I mean, I mean, it just is what it is. Think about how many guys that we coach and train right now, and they send that text, and he goes, hey man, I want to let you know, I just left my company. And they're telling, like, I'm gonna be like, oh, good job, man, wait a you know, get out of there. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, I thought you said you were happy. I thought you said you guys were building something great. Yeah, yeah but we don't know, man. I, I, I caught one of them lying. Oh, okay. Good luck. Okay? If you're gonna leave when someone fucks up, I promise you, man, you're gonna leave everywhere your whole life. And everyone's gonna leave you. That is exactly the reason why I make fun of guys that end up marrying or dating a chick that she didn't another dude for them. Yeah. Yeah, dude, what makes you think she's gonna be loyal to you? Yeah, bro. Like, you gotta be a moron to take that girl seriously. That yeah, she doesn't want her guy anymore. She wants me. So she's betraying somebody for you, and she promises she won't betray you. This one's different. Clock's ticking. That's my favorite time. So this is a pine tree right here. Where, where Let's go! What's up, man? What's up, man? Damn. Well, yeah, so we got the gym in Encino. You guys, I don't know if someone didn't tell you that I had that gym. Yeah, well, we knew so, you had a gym here. We just don't ever come to California, like, ever. I have an original gym that I had for, like, seven years, and then we moved to the new space in Encino. Okay. So it's there. I don't know. I was like, I was like, the, what's the name of the old Same, same oh, thing. Same By we, it means, yeah. you know. Yeah, the new one's in Encino. Okay. Yeah, dude, we, we have no idea where we're at, man. We're over another one in, in Miami. Okay. Yeah, nice. Are you to Miami or are you going to stay? Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I always be back and forth because I have all a bunch of studios in here, too. Got it. My Love studio's it. here and we have like three other ones. <laughs> you always travel with a ton of people? Dude, we got fing 100 of us. It's funny, I, I never I don't travel with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, dude, our, our 
Dude, we've been able to do some pretty cool shit with a team. You started out selling cars, right? Yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah. It's my way out. I hate car salespeople. Dude, I hated, hate I hated everything, God. but I'm a oh, yeah. yeah, but but we'll we'll rip it. But anyways, yeah. but that was uh that was where that was where I started making money, you know. I got in sales. We should start the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's rolling? Oh, it's rolling? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. So. You got me saying I hate car sales people? Yeah, but no, that's good. I hate them, bro. I, well, Man. Why do you think why do you think the 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 world has gotten like so coddling to people? Like cuz the fact that there are people that would rather see you, I mean, I, I kind of know the answer, but I think they'd rather see you do not as good as you could because where they're at. Yeah. But like that's on like a massive scale now. Like yeah. it's just like it seems like People like do really want to see you do good when you're not doing good. And then as you start to do good, they're like, oh, no, I want to I want to see him do bad now. He's doing too good or she's doing too good or whatever it is. Yeah, it's it's because people put boundaries on you, man. Like, listen, like, let's say, listen, the, your biggest supporters are going to be people that you haven't met yet. Yeah, they're, they're not even going to be in your life right now. And I'm going to tell you why. If I knew you and I would be like, oh, dude, I know who he is. And so I put a label around you. I put a box around you and I put boundaries on you. I do, and I put them on me too, but I put them on you. And when you go outside those boundaries, I don't like that. Because you have a picture about how you think I should be. Yeah, and you're outgrowing it, and then I don't like that. And so anyways, when I see you trying to take risks- But that, that is in relationship to the person's self. Yeah, and, but then it's also like the God of this generation is comfort. And so if I'm pursuing comfort and I see you going for uncomfortable, like I'm gonna try to pull you back. And so like- But the, wouldn't you say that that's because of, like if it's you in this case, it's because of your own- I'm not pursuing it as much as that person is. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a limiting belief, right? I have it, and then so I have it for you. And by the way, listen, if somebody ever tells you, this is the truth, if somebody ever tells you that you, you're not capable or you, you can't do it, number one, it could be partly them. They don't have the belief. But number two, there could be some truth. Your ego could be so sensitive, right, that you're a little baby and you're a little and if you went to do something hard, they figured you'd probably get your ass kicked and then get hurt. So they're trying to stop you. Dude, you're a savage. So people should be telling you, if you're like, yeah, I'm going to go build this thing. They're like, yeah, you are. Dude, you're to the point now when you say you're going to go do something, you probably don't have a lot of people saying, oh, you're not going to oh, do yeah, that. Oh yeah, not now. No, no way. now they're like, yeah, yeah, you are. I can't wait to see it. You know why? Because you've given them evidence that like, watch me, mother I'm going to go do this. So- Perfect. So to the kid or to the person who hasn't given enough evidence to people in their life. They're all going to hate. You're just going to have to be a part of it. And by the way, like uh, you're, uh, you watch a lot of fighters. I don't watch a lot of fights, but like I'm like, my guys are all, they love fighting and I, and I love it too, but I've just always been in business. But like Conor McGregor, he's like, it, you know, and it's fuel. It, it feeds me. It motivates me. I mean, you know, if I was to ask you what, what makes you fueled me telling you, man, Bradley, dude, you're, you're so great, man. You're awesome. You know, or like, dude, you're not going to do that. You're well, nothing, that's funny. Bro. I look back on a lot of the stuff that I'd done, like weird viral videos. It was always the best things were always when people were like, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. I was or, like, oh, I'm going to try it then. Yeah. When, when someone tells you, you can't do something. Like I'll never forget specifically Nadim. I love this guy. He's a great guy, but we were filming this video and I was filming this squatting on like a hoverboard with like 315 or whatever, when the hoverboard was Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, I'm going to do this. And he was like, nah, it's because I've always done kind of crazy, stupid. Shit. And he was like, nah, I think this one's a really bad Dude, idea. Crazy, and I was right? like, this is, I'm doing this today. <laughs> I have to Did do this. Do yeah. And it went viral and all that. She was on ESPN and shit. it was crazy. You're but crazy. it was one of those things where I, I literally remember that moment. And he's a good person. He's not a bad person by any means. No, he's he not didn't even, want you to get hurt, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's yeah. like, I don't think this is smart. And I was like, then I have to do it. Yeah. What if and, I pull it off? <laughs> like, Dude, this is what I always tell people, man, as crazy as that is, you may not be where you are today had you not done that. Well, yeah, I mean, everything stacks to, to everything else. That's what else, I'm saying. Like, sure. dude, that could have been the thing that made that one relationship, that made that other one, that made these things happen. All the dots align, man. God gives us these opportunities and we either say yes or no. Yeah. And at the end of the day, man, you train every day. You train your mind, you train physically, you train your marriage, your relationship, you train your team, your company. To, give, to be stress tested. How do you find balance though? Cause I've, I've always struggled with the relationship side of things. Like historically, like so terrible. 
So, so here's the deal, man, like for real. And I want to say like the reason why I, I will get into this for a minute, because number one, 99% of people, they get their kicked, not because they don't know the word business well, because their personal life sucks. Okay. Yeah. And it didn't start out sucking. It started out good. And then they wanted to get in this business, you know, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and all this, and they go do all this. And then all of a sudden it takes everything you have. That's the law of success to make it and win. You have to become obsessed. You have to lose your mind to this, this craft. And then what happens is we learn, our family learns to live without us essentially because we're trying to win so big. And if you are great at business and I'm great at business, but you don't have a good healthy home and I do, I'll beat your ass. It's because you're going to burn out eventually and I'll beat you, especially long game, which everything is long game. You may beat me short game, but long game, I'll beat you. And, and so, so how, so what's the fix? You got to take your family with you. Look, I got my 13 year old son right here with me. You know why? Cause my greatest responsibility is my son. He's, it's my son, bro. Like he's, he's me. If I don't take care of him, I shouldn't get to take care of anyone else. Not yeah. one single human. I have to take care of me first. And I take care of me for him, for my two daughters and for, and for my wife. I can't listen. My team, they'll all, if you ask them, if you, and I mean this, I have an unrecruitable team. And when you say, what does that mean? That means that if you walked up to one of my guys on my team and you said, I'll pay you 10 times what Andy's paying you. Once you come work for me, they'd be like, Fuck you, they don't work for money. And you say like, what do you mean? Well, me and Jackie realized, dude, that like we wanted to build something that was different than anything else. And so all these broken people, we've never had to love. Dude, honestly, I thought about why I wanted to get in shape. It was truly so I would love myself more. And so Jackie would love me more. And then honestly, I felt like I just, I can't operate when I don't take care of myself anymore. Like I just have to look in the mirror and like me. And I'm not good to anyone else if I don't like me. Um, also from a perspective of like my team. So they look up to me because I take care of myself physically. My, 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 my wife and my family, dude, I take such good care of my team. I mean, my family. My wife, me and her, we're affectionate, hands locked everywhere we go, and it's no fake. Me and her, when we're, there's not something right, we fight immediately. Fighting is good. <laughs> no, no, it is good. It's good, but you got to fight fair, and you can't. And what does fair mean? It means you can't get historical. We have rules. Like you can't bring up something from the past. It's got to be about this. Number two, we got to hear each other out, right? And dude, like most people never learn how to really build a relationship. Also, the biggest fights that we have are because I'm not present. It's the truth, like I'm not present. And so like, if you can fix this, if, if you're just, and so there's a term, we, we say, be where your feet are. And, and Jackie explained this to me, and this is, this is gonna make really good sense. And if someone gives you the play, if you run it, you score. If you don't run it, you don't score. So here's the play. You just have to be where your feet are. It goes like this. I mean, being present. Yep. So it's, it's, the, it's the greatest skill on planet Earth. If there was one skill, I would say the art of communication would be the greatest skill to make you money, but the greatest skill to have a rich life Getting rich, communicate. Having a rich life, super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. It's gonna be the art of being where your feet are. So I don't care how many hours you work a day, doesn't matter. When you're there, you f it up. The second you leave, where are you going? To the gym? Good, that's a sacred place. No texts, no calls, no emails. Phone down, f it up. Jim, home. You're with who? Wife, kids, girlfriend. Dude, f it up. It's so hard to stay true to sometimes. But you know what's hard? It's not staying true to it and being successful and having a f an unfulfilled life, having a hole in your heart. And dude, I want you to think about something. You, you fucking motivate all these people. You got all these people around the world that you motivate, you inspire. You know that say you changed my life. I know they tell you this. Dude, your greatest responsibility, your mom. And dude, think about it. How often do you motivate your mom? Your girlfriend, how often do you call them? I'm gonna tell you, imagine your mom call you today and be like, man, I watch Andy Elliott, he fires me up. You're like, that's my job. That's my job to bring good <laughs> to my 
mom. And here I am doing all this for all these other people. So my wife says something. And this is why she's super direct. She's always like, who are you trying to please? You know, like what's most important to you? Like if you got sick today, right, Bradley? If you got sick, just for real, like who would be there? And you'd say, well, my mom. Okay, cool. Well, she's number one there. So like each day there's a bucket for you to make sure they're taken care of. Yeah. And, and, and dude, when you take care of that bucket, dude, you feel on fire, bro. Nobody can fuck with you when you're taking care of that. And those people are getting your best. And by the way, you can give the world your best and give it to them. So I used to say this, it's an excuse. I used to say, well, isn't that hard? And my wife goes, you're limiting beliefs. You're one dimensional, Andy. Who the told you you can only make money, but you can't have a bad marriage. You can't be a bad you know, parent. You can't be in great shape. Like who told you that? I didn't tell you that. Okay, like someone sold you on that and it's a lie. And anyway, she brainwashed me. Had anyone sold you on that ever? Everybody sold me on it, that we couldn't, but Jackie was the first one that said I could. And I swear on my life, dude, brought it, no joke. I feel like this should be called Jackie or something, not Elliot. What's going on here? What the f is going on here? It's the truth. Yeah, it's like, it's, dude, you know, everything is because of her. I feel like we should interview her. What that's what I said here? in the beginning. What the f is going on? That's what I said in the very beginning. That's crazy though. I'm not even joking, dude. Like I said that in the beginning, listen, that's, and I'm gonna tell you why we're growing so fast, like truly like our brand. I have hundreds of thousands of guys that are, I have 500,000 people that are in our digital training system, okay? That we communicate, coach with. Our next five events are all sold out. We do a couple a month, it's crazy. And you know the number one thing that everybody says? Like, and, and they love the fitness aspect. They love the sales. They love the closing. They love the business, the strategies. The number one thing is they go, dude, since I've watched how you and your wife run, like, my life has been way better. It's, it's the devil only attacks what's valuable, and he's taking the homes out, bro. If I get it. And so if you don't have a girl, then what is that? What is that for everyone else? Then, then you just need to, you need to immerse, like total immersion. You need to immerse yourself in to a brotherhood. Um, and you say, what is that? That's just a band of brothers. Like, dude, like, honestly, if I wasn't married, if I didn't have my team, like, I would be like, I'm working for you. I don't care. I'm here. So whatever, what do I need to do? I wouldn't even care about money. I'd just be like, I'm here because... I need to be around good people and that's it. And then there's two things that ruins a guy's life, wrong girl and not having a brotherhood. And you know those two things to be true. Because it's a fact, yeah. Yeah, so like, um, and so like, so, and the same things that I'm saying, when I say brotherhood, all my guys that I, I, ha I, ha I have a true brotherhood that's called, the, it's a coaching program called the brotherhood. And all these guys, they all bring their wives with them. And like, we don't separate men from women. They're a team, dude. And we're just, we're getting them rip shredded growing their business teaching them how to build culture in an environment um so like you have a team right um you know you have a team um and your companies should be an example for other companies your company should be a hero making machine so anyone that's working inside of your company should literally becoming the greatest example on planet earth they should be walking billboards to like what human excellence looks like and that's my guys and, you know, and by the way, like, if you complain in our company, we'll throw you through a window. I swear to God, there can be a problem and we'll solve that, but we don't complain. We don't talk shit on each other. We, everything is direct face to face. No egos. We're all alphas and we're the most loving people. No one's in charge. We have a hundred guys in our company. Nobody's in charge. Nobody's in charge. There's no boss. We are all. So who's favorite. alpha then? All of us. Because alpha is the top. We're all alpha. God. <laughs> No, but it's the truth. There's got to be one, though. I know it's God. It yeah. sounds like it's her. <laughs> it yeah, actually it sounds like it's her. It actually is her. You yeah. know what I mean? And hey, listen. I mean, if you want to talk to her for a minute, she can no, over, no, she no. Can she's great. No, like she's a savage, dude. She's more no, of, of a great. man than most. Unless you want to get on here, I don't know. Too. Yeah, come yeah, here. You can sit over there. Here, you here, come sit right here, mate. Yeah. Sit, sit on that one. Hey, but because because you and you can ask her, but like she's the cult leader, bro. Yeah, it <laughs> sounds like that. Okay, so before we get into this. uh why do you think, like, why is making money so important to people? Well, making money is the, if, if to a lot of people, feels like it's success, right? And by the way, if you want to help people, you need to make money. Okay, like, I mean, I can't, 
I can't, I can't, I want to give her, I promised her the ride of a lifetime when she was with me. And that means me being the man for her. But also I want to take her on vacations. I want to have a nice house. I want nice cars and I want all that. And that's the beginning. That's early, you know, early success. But then after that, we also want to go do cool. We want to build a big business. We want to build big companies. We're building an Elliott army of So what, what do you think though? What do you think matters the most? Changing people's lives. And I, you know what I learned? I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you something real quick. This is crazy. So if anybody wants to make money, this is the key. I think the reason we're well, making money. Who people- you become determines what you earn, who you become. So like, it's not the skill you learn. It's who you become, who you be. The, the, the world's a mirror. And dude, for, for 39 years, I didn't become who I was supposed to become. And then finally, when I did, the most I ever made was 2 million. Dude, I went to make it hundred million. And I'm going to tell you this. How did a guy 50 X his income? I'm going to tell you how. I became the person I always wanted to be. And now I help people every day. And the more you give, don't, I know they say the more you get, but like, I didn't try to, to get back. I just wanted to become so she would be proud of me. And dude, we just grew this crazy empire, bro. But before you made the money, we made, deci- made the decision to not make decisions based on money. So we weren't going to be a slave of that currency of money. So making money was just a product, a byproduct of being who we really were. Because what do you think money represents to people? To people, success. Yeah, you think it's a representation of success? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, everybody goes around and, you know. I think everyone tries to get money because I think everyone is trying to get love. Yeah, that's what I was saying, dude. I just, honestly, I thought when I got in shape, like she was just going to love me more. And like, honestly, like, I don't know how you grew up, but like, like, I didn't have a mom growing up. So like, I just, like it didn't, didn't exist. My dad was never home. So it was like, we were raised by kids. And dude, I was like, I had a girl break my heart when I was a young kid. And then I just ripped everyone's heart out after that. I was I've like, been there. everyone. I've been there, yeah. Yeah, dude, I would intentionally, <laughs> I've been there. I would intentionally hurt people like, yeah. and enjoy it. Like I told her, and when I met her when I was 26, she was 24. She was like, hey, you around on me? Like, I'm gone. You get drugged, you're drunk. You around on me, you're gone. And I had never had anybody. I only dated blondes before I was with her and nothing against blondes. But like, <laughs> no, like I want to tell you that Jackie, I like had a certain kind of, you know, relationship. She was like, everybody was like, oh, he's a player. She's like, no, I no, you don't play me. Like, dude, if you're, we're going to be together, you're going to be with me and we're going to do shit. We're not going to be together. It's it. Like, I don't need you. She goes, I'm independent. I'm going to make money on my own. I'm good. She was more successful than me when I met her. So like what I loved about Jackie was Jackie didn't need me. Well, I told so him, I'm not going to cry for through. you. I'm not going to be like, why did you do this to me? Like, I don't deserve this or give me a reason. I was like, you just won't ever see me again. It's totally cool. And I could tell she was serious. And I was like, oh, so then I straightened up. Like to me, honestly, Bradley, like I, I, she puts these rules, which I'm a rule breaker. I break every rule. And she tells me the rules I can't break. And so, like, she keeps me in that line because I always call her outside the lines. And she'll say, like, this, you have to stay in these lines. And she wants me to grow. She wants me to do good. But she helps me become who I need to become. Every, women have a very good intuition. I mean, most of them have a very good intuition. And so, so the best thing I did was when I went to self-develop, like, we went to Patrick Bet David's event when I first started training, right, to, to change. I took her with me. I bought a ticket for her. Everywhere I went, she went because Jackie would perceive the information differently. You know what I mean? But I also wouldn't be fighting against you. See, a lot of times business so and family are always fighting against each other. So a lot of times you probably are like, hey, you know, you'd stay home, you know, and then you're like trying to share what you're doing, but she doesn't really understand. So society teaches you to fight against each other. What if you could do it the same? How much more would your spouse or your girlfriend motivate you if you brought her along the ride? So. Well, you get also a different, a completely different perspective on course, something like yes. you'll have something a little bit more intimate as far as like knowing him to a degree of what he wants or what you guys want together. Exactly. So Good it makes part. sense to have that counterpart. Yeah. What are yeah. some things that you don't think can change? Do you think anything could change? I think, I think anything can change. Dude, human beings are so resilient, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude, like we see miracles every day. I mean, you know, you see it all the time. I mean... Your, your life is, you're out in the open. You get millions of DMs a day. I mean, it's weird. You know? It's so weird. But dude, it's miracles, bro. And so like human beings are resilient, you know, like 
We've watched people that were going through a divorce just turn around just because they're in the right room together for 10 minutes. They hear something and then they go together. Um, I've watched people that, just like people have lost it all, I've watched people that literally turn a corner and then they become one of the greatest leaders ever. Dude, I was a horrible leader. I mean, horrible. I never had a good leader. So what the fuck does a good leader mean? So I had to be a bad leader my whole life and then to wake up and be like that. Like, what is a winner? Okay. What's a loser? Okay. If you want to be a winner, just flip what losing is. So I took what all the bad leadership I did and then I just flipped it and then I became a good leader. And then like- dude, But how do you stay true to that? Like it's, it's so hard for people to stay consistent in that. In I the think, actual changing remember process. Remember she said pain teaches? Yeah. Right? I think when the pain overrides the fear of change, people change. So like yeah. when the pain gets so high- like we said earlier, yeah. People are like, fuck it. You know? Like, dude, honestly, like I'm going to tell you- Almost kind of not having another choice. Yeah, like Jackie, um, one of the things she said too, remember that day she grabbed my love handle, she also followed it up with another little sentence that was like, hey, me and the kids have learned to live without you. And, you know, she didn't want to hurt me. She needed to tell me the truth. And I didn't want to hear it. And so I went and looked in the mirror and I realized, dude, they have. Like, I'm in all the pictures and I don't even remember when we took any of them. I was always thinking about being back at work. And she just asked me, she's like, look, I want you to be a winner. I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. But also, you promised me the ride of a lifetime when you married me. I decided I wasn't going to sleep with no other guys. I was going to be just with you. I was going to marry your I was going to do everything with you. And this is the I get. Fuck you. You so know? It's like, be, it's like having to be honest with yourself, too. Yeah, but I needed that, dude. And by the way, like the way that I'm telling it to you, she didn't tell me that way, but that's the way I heard it. Yeah, I know. Like if you, you. Yeah. But, if, <laughs> but Brad, if, Bradley, if you were to tell me, like, hey, go get in shape, I would hear you say, you're a fat put piece of shit. Get your in the gym. That's, <laughs> that's how <laughs> that's I funny. process it, right? Yeah. I don't I mean, my guys, we all process it that way. I love way. when he thinks he paraphrases me. Like, maybe that was my first two years of self development. All I listened to was David Goggins. So, I, like, I program myself to receive. I, I, I'm my own drill sergeant, right? So, when you say something to me, then I just repeat it back to myself. And I think I say it to myself that way. And, you know, anyways, just like betting people wrong, dude. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. She's an underdog. I'm an underdog. My whole team are underdogs. All of us have all been betrayed. We've never had loyalty. You know, I mean, one of my guys, Jacob, over here is 24. His dad got killed in front of his face when he was 10 years old. You know, like these guys that go undergo like a lot of pain, these guys I can really relate with. And I'm like, dude, do you guys want to build something bad? And they're like, yes. And that's what we built. And that was Elliot Army. Mm -hmm. And then I got a couple guys like Ali. You know, he's an MMA fighter. Never, he's born in Africa. He speaks 20 different languages. <laughs> uh, you know, like, but like he's, he's, uh, he, he's never had a drink of alcohol in his life. Probably smart. He's super smart. Yeah. But do you know smart. what? His whole life, he's never had anyone. He's, he's addicted to pushing. Mm -hmm. He's never been around people that were like better or could keep pushing and wouldn't lay off. And dude, the second time, he, first time he saw our program, he's like, dude, I need to be in the middle of this. Shit. I love this. It's just, it's just a brotherhood. And uh, it's a company, man. And, and anyway, so, but we're all about taking our families with us, um, our, our kids. So the Elliott Group, um, Elliott Army, we have our, our, our 70,000 square foot facility. We have a big gym in the middle of it. The rest of it is a big selling ground floor. There's tons of energy. There's a 500 person uh, seminar room that's downstairs. It's always filled with people daily. Um, but the coolest thing is in the back of it, there's a school. So all of our, our kids, they all go to school there. We teach them, you know, we have uh, military teachers that teach them God, discipline. They read Andy Frazella, you know, Jocko Willings. They read, that's hmm. the books they read, dude. That's We're funny. raising them to be killers. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My son, uh, right here, he's, he's 13, my son Ian, all my daughters. Rob Bailey flew down, uh, first time I met him was two and a half years ago. And he flew down to the lion's den. He was just mind He's like, dude, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, my kids, I introduced them to my kids. And at that time, they were 10, 
seven, and five. And um, my kids know every Rob Bailey song. Yeah, no. All of them. He's they know yeah, and they more were lyrics singing, than they, him. They were singing the song. I said, like, hey, sing 100 to Rob Bailey. And they're like, 100, 100, only got one bass. And they're, and, and then Rob's when he cusses, like, like, when he says, I'm a mother yeah, beast, he's like, I'm, I'm a, a beast. beast. <laughs> and Rob's like, this is crazy, man. He's like, they're not getting that from you because you cuss all the time. Right. But they yes. know, though, to pull it. Like, they know. They're a little wiser. Yeah. And dude, <laughs> but, but I pull my kids on stage all the time. Like I pull them on stage in front of, and I do you try them. not to swear when they're on stage or what? No, <laughs> Dude, there's no tame go, in this man. guy. <laughs> Why is it so easy to swear? It just feels so good. But you know what? <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> hey, but and I tell people, and people are like, they're like, I, I could listen to this guy, but I just can't. I'm like, do listen to me, man. You're always going to hang on to something, okay? Yeah, yeah. If, of if if I said a whole message and it could change your life, but the only thing you got hung up on was a cuss word, man. Come on, dude. Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, it just goes back to like the selective, like picking what you want to listen to or not and creating excuses why it's, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, he swore though. So like that, you you probably get that on the internet. Like you, because I've seen people talk or like critique like Uh, your style. Oh yeah. yeah. People hate, people hate our directness, but we've honestly, I don't want to be anyone else. Okay. So when, so when I came out, um, when when I wanted to start my sales training program, um, when I came out, I was like, I don't want to be like, well, first of all, I thought everybody's going to say, there. this guy's a Grant Cardone wannabe because, you know, he was in the sales industry, right? Yeah. And it's like maybe you open in gyms and people are like, oh, he's a wannabe of this guy, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever said that about anyone or something or whatever, but like I knew I was going to get that. So the first thing I want to do is I was like, fuck that, no suits, you know, no bull. Like I'm, I'm running around, I'm going to work out, I'm going to get jacked. And all these guys that are in their 30s and 40s that do business, they're all fat, they're all lazy they they don't take care of themselves they don't they're not even their wives anymore they're lazy they're pieces of shit their team aren't loyal to them they're double standard non leader pussies like it's everywhere bro and i'm being really harsh because i'm just telling you the truth they're weak everywhere and so i was like dude i'm gonna build savages so i want a savage brand so we were like all black i'm like all black we're going black elliot it's gonna be elliot and we're gonna put sayings on the back of these things like savage right and then that's all we're gonna wear we're gonna wear these shirts everywhere that's all we're gonna wear that's our only wardrobe no suits no nothing that's it we're gonna be comfortable too anyways to be honest yeah but like that's gonna (laughs) be our brand though and dude listen man like everybody made fun this guy's in a t-shirt i went out to dinner last night Uh uh-huh and everyone's all fancy and i'm wearing literally probably the same thing just a different color that's your brand bro (laughs) i just don't give a i just don't care but at the end of the day though you and look good in what uh, you do. Yeah. And you know what? If you were really out of shape, I'm I'm telling you that shit wouldn't fly anymore. Probably, huh? No. You <laughs> can wear it because you got the bicep veins. You're in shape. You're self jacked. You're a savage. People know that your standards, your it's not your uniform. Your standards, you walk in. It's moral authority. Like I say this like moral authority. You walk in through a room, people are like, even if I didn't know who you were, I'd be like, who the fuck's that guy? I don't know who you are. Just because of the muscles? Just take care of yourself. I fucking respect you. I'm like, why do I respect that guy? Oh, he fucking takes care of himself. I'm pretty sure he probably keeps his fucking word. So like immediately my saying. respect just goes to you. And I don't even know you yet. And, and, and so anyways, I'm trying to tell everybody that the world right now is like so thirsty for fucking leaders in the community, yeah. in the homes, in the business. So if you want to get rich, you got to increase your value. How do you increase your value? You become a leader because the greatest scarcest resource in the world right now is leadership. And what is a leader? A leader is the skill of influence. What is your opinion on the world right now? It's like this, this political era and. Dude, I don't watch politics. I mean, you have to tell her. No? Like, None? Dude, it's never been easier to mess. win. I think it's never been easier to win. I think I wouldn't be a politician. It's, it's just, they all suck. Yeah. I think I could do it. Dude, from what I see, it looks like it's a rigged game. So need, even if I learned uh, yeah. it, even if I learned it, I wouldn't be able to affect it. Um, so the, the greatest thing that I can do is to build a great company for other companies to emulate and to just, you know, take good care of my family and my team and try to pour as much as I can into other people. And that's our ministry. That's our church. You know, I told you, I said, I asked you to believe in God. And you said, yeah, you've probably changed more people's lives than a lot of churches. Mm-hmm. Which is weird. Very no, weird. No, it's actually cool because people go into church and they expect, right? 
for someone to deliver a message because it's like deliver the message hour. Mm -hmm. You just you just deliver it all the time, man. Like I watch your content, all your content is like like human excellence, changing your life, making good decisions. But it's standards. interesting because like I I don't know when I look at it, it's like, but it's just me talking about things that I experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is and like- my experience with them. It's real though. But yeah, that's real. Like, dude, listen, you know what's crazy? And I want to tell you this, like this, and this is why it's super important for you to keep growing is because well, number one, if you don't keep growing, your, your fans will outgrow you and they'll go to someone else. Yeah, of course. Because they need you to keep growing. That's number one. And I don't think that'll ever happen with you. But I want to say that the reason why you got to keep growing is because there's a lot of people watching you, man. And, and every time that you grow, they're growing right there with you, man. Like- I'm willing to bet there's millions of people you've never met that are just running around that you've said something that changed all of their lives and like you just got to keep and dropping that. And you, so said, we said, you said it's just an experience. And I'm like, bro, that experience, like walking around with a group of men in a brotherhood and doing life, like everybody wants that, dude. You love being with your buddies and and doing business with your friends or like, you know, like being real. It's just weird for me because like the way it all started, what it was never like, this is the thing I'm going to do. This is the thing that like, I, I didn't see people doing this thing, like at least in the social media space because mm -hmm. it wasn't a space when I started. That's right. It was just doing stuff that was just what, I was a trainer. I sold training. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I did all the sales bullshit, all yeah. the no's and overcoming them. And that's, yeah. that's what I did before any of this stuff. And then I was just posting content about my life. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, there was no like, you know how you said you watched me or so whoever else you watched on the internet was like, yeah. oh, I can, I can. You showed us a way to live. I didn't. There was none of it. It was just like I was just doing random shit, and then it, all of a sudden it became a thing that like people were like, well, this is really cool. You're cool. We like what you're saying. We like what you're doing. Yeah, because you you show us what's possible, bro. Do like people like don't know what's possible? You remember, you know, the four minute mile. Somebody did it. Everybody did it. It's like when you're going out there and you have fun and you're doing this. I'm like, why aren't I having fun? Let's go do that. And plus your way of fun, like you have a good standard, you know, like you're not out, you know, running around doing, you know, like ruining people's lives. Like you're no. helping people, man. And the fact that you're in the gym, like you've genuinely have always cared about people changing. If you can change someone's body, you change their whole life. Of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, dude, when you change someone's body, I mean, they, they love themselves more. They get more people, more love. I mean, they're right finally right so other people like you know are attracted to them their kids look up to them you know what do you think young kids look up to superheroes right and maybe yeah. dad's a superhero but now. this is why i think everything comes back to love everything we do yeah to facts. feel love to be able to share love to be able to get it whatever accept it at all it, it all comes back to that even the, yeah. the the thing about money is like just another representation of I want oh, people to love me that's all it is that's why yeah. humans do it's love it's in 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 a sense of intimacy with yeah. a, with a woman and then also in community. Those yeah. are the two things that drive everyone. That's like in that identify, like everything you just explained or like described about like the team. and Stems back to that. Always back to that. Obviously yeah. like the front end, the way you, which you're like presenting it or like driving people towards it or pushing people towards it is, can change versus your, your, you know, your sort of method versus someone else's method. Yeah. But it always comes back to love. It always comes back to like, do I love myself enough mm -hmm. that I could love others? That's right. And, and it's weird though, how we get it twisted where it's like, Oh, I gotta, but I have to get money and things, and then people will love me. Mm -hmm. But so when I was telling you that when I did all those things, there was no point, like, yeah, I needed to make money and I knew that I needed to have money to like pay rent, but I never was like, oh, I'm gonna do this to make money ever at any point in my life. And and then I had the most money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, I never focused works, on it. And bro. I was just all I was focused on was like trying to feel love, trying to feel love within myself. And oh, I'm not trying to cry like a uh, but trying to love myself because yeah. I, you know, the way I, the way my, my life was coming up was I was constantly questioning, like, am I good enough? Am I worth it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, should I have these good things in my life because of, you know, my circumstances, I lost my father when I was real young. Um, and I was always kind of struggling with like, am I lovable? Mm. Sorry. Oh. <clears throat> huh. No, that's so, good. That's the side, but, but that's the side of you that we love though. We love your savage side mm. and we love that side. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because that that too, it, it's, it's weird how it shifted and it's changed right. because that, that sort of savage side that came out of that also, yeah, it's very like, I have to prove this. I have to show this. I'm going to make sure that, that, and it was never, it was never money driven. Mm -hmm. And again, I go back to it. I got 
more than I could be grateful for, you know, mm -hmm. but it's weird how that all came through that. But my, my like intention didn't it almost really shift it. Cause before it was proving, I have to prove that I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. I have to prove that like I can be loved. And now it's like, it's completely different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a way different experience for me now. It's weird. It's weird that having these conversations and just like talking about it is just, still to this day gets me a little emotional. Cause it's just like, it's almost like I still haven't fully come to like close or turns with that. I don't know if I ever will, but I don't know. It's just weird, man. It's weird it when I have matters. these conversations. It does really matter. Yeah, but I, I want more people to understand that idea about love. And cause to get the money, to have the success, to have the great relationship, like you have to love yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you, man. Yes, Seriously, you. you're fucking awesome. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you guys, thank and you thanks for coming on as well. Too. It means a lot. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Really, man. Hey, guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero zero zero. One percenters. Look, I know one percenters, it can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I wanna get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I wanna roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link, it says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level, accountability to go to the next level go to the description box below click on the link fill out your information i'll talk to you in the next 24 hours let's kill it